Hello YouTube. Uh, I figured I'd do a reassembly video of this RC2510 uh, 25 ton hydraulic cylinder by Enerpack. There's not much information on YouTube about doing this so I thought just a simple reassembly video would get you a little help. I don't like to do teardown videos so much because you can get all the information from putting it back together and it's nice working with clean stuff. Alright, here's your uh, seal pack. I'll show you how it's put together. First, you got your retaining ring, which just clips on there. It's about 30 thousandths thick. Goes into a groove. Um, then you got your seal. Make sure your lip is on the bottom side. See how you got this kind of, anyways, you get the point, right? And so that makes sense, because as the fluid comes up, it pressurizes up in there and pushes the seal up against the internal side of the cylinder. And then you got your ring. It's just a backstop ring which goes up against your split washers and that ring looks like this. This is the new one I got from Enter Enterpack. However, um, this one is stamped, this one's machined, and this one holds a tighter tolerance and I like it better. So I'm sticking with it. And you got your split nuts, or your split washers, pardon me. And you'll notice you got a chamfer on this side, no chamfer on that side. That chamfer will go in up in the upward position. So will this one. Uh, location doesn't matter, just slides around. This is basically just a bearing and it slides up in the internal side of the cylinder. One little side note about these cylinders. When you order your kit, you'll notice you cannot find an RC2510 cylinder rebuild kit, but you can find an RC2510K rebuild kit. Now, I think that they don't make this kit anymore it's just a really old cylinder however the RC 2510k cylinder kit is pretty much the same except you will get you get a dust wiper seal which this cylinder did not come equipped with originally so that's pretty nice I'm gonna see if I can work this in here I'm not sure if uh, there's space for it but looking at this uh, retaining nut I think I can make it work if I put it back up in here let's move on to how the spring assembly goes into the ram now if you've been paying attention and your eye is pretty acute to these kind of things, you'll notice that this ram has hardly any wear. This isn't chrome plated, it's just bare machined and polished, it's probably 4140 or some alloy that has a lot of chrome and shiny metal in it, but you'll notice that there's hardly any scoring on this. Now this cylinder was brand new and it was sitting in wax paper when I found it, and uh, well, those, those seals, they just break down and fall in little crumbles. So now I'll show you how the spring goes in there. Now this is the little section right here and most people have a heck of a time taking these things apart and I'll show you why. This spring goes down in here like this. It's retained by this screw which happens to be behind the female fitting. So you gotta remove that female fitting in order to remove the spring. So this little screw goes in the loop, pardon me, goes in the loop and it threads into the back side of that cylinder. I'll show you the bore and how that works. Alright, now that you're looking down in the bore, you'll notice that there's a pocket cut out in the very bottom and that spring drops in there, perpendicular, aligned with the end of the spring so that that fastener goes through that loop and holds on just like that. While you're at it, that's a new, what a new cylinder looks like. Hardly been used. Alright, next you'll take your spring, you'll drop this tapered sleeve in through the back. You got your screw. Should look like that. Make sure the ram is oriented vertically. Now here's kind of a tricky part, you gotta thread that screw, which is inside the spring, down into the hole, which is in the uh, top of the ram. So you'll take the longest screwdriver you have, and you'll drop it down through the hole. And now I'm gonna put oil 
around the seal. You can use hydraulic fluid. I'm using a Type B, just a machine tool oil. To make sure the screw at the top of the cylinder is backed off as far that way as it's willing to go. Notice how that loop's sitting out there nice. It's almost flush with the base. That's good. We'll now take our split rings, lube them up. So it's important when you're putting this in here to just wiggle that seal around so make sure that the lips aren't folded over, make sure it all looks right, and then just slide it in. If you have the screw properly adjusted in the top of your ram, this loop should sit pretty right behind that hole. Now I can guarantee you that if this screw isn't adju adjusted properly as far back as it will go before dropping out and your screw assembly and your spring assembly coming loose, you will have a hell of a time getting this screw down in there. And with the slight amount of deliberation, drive her home. Notice the flat head on the back of that screw. This will take a little effort as it's tensioning your spring and pulling on those threads. Your end result should look like that, sticking up a little, about a quarter inch. You'll take your new copper washer, drop it down on there, take your nut. You'll take your socket and do this manually because you don't want to strip those threads. And once you've started the thread, just give it a little tap. Now we're almost there, we can reinstall our uh, push cap or whatever you call this. Now before I put this alignment bushing in here, I'm going to drizzle some oil down in there. This will lubricate my wiper seal and it will lubricate this bearing surface on the inside of the sleeve. Now the seal's got your top lip, so this is facing up. You'll notice you got your taper on the bottom. It's going to go in there like that. Drop that in there like that. Now I'm going to take my ring, just thread it in. Now I'll take my copper rod I used to remove this ring. And I'll go till it's a little past hand tight. Now one thing I forgot to do here that I highly recommend you do is to pre-fill the cylinder. This will purge the air out of the system and it will make it a lot easier. Alright folks, I hope this video helped you all. If you have any questions, please leave, please leave it in the comment section. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.